It's not news that the world is experiencing a global pandemic that has seen nations take drastic measures to keep its citizens safe and healthy. Coronavirus, also known as COVID-19, took the world by storm. And unfortunately, Nigeria is not left out. It's true that many offices have been shut down for more than a week, except for those rendering essential services. No doubt, this has affected the Nigerian economy drastically. Small business owners are complaining about the loss they are incurring daily as a result of the lockdown. And for some, whose livelihoods depends on them going out every day, the past few days hasn't been easy. Elijah part of our population live on daily you know business so for this set of people that live on daily business petty trades and all that you have the conductors you have the woman selling things on the road and all that for this kind of people it's going to be hard on that it's going to be very hard on that because the truth is they don't even have savings to say that oh i'm going to go into my savings and you know be able to survive for this short period also but even for people that have savings this period is going to eat deep into their savings because they would not further make money because they live on daily income and staying at home a lot of people are not going to make money as a nation going to affect our economy because once the economy is not active that means people are not getting money it's when the economy is active that money circulates that's when people go to work, that's when the person that goes to work comes around and buy dairy from the woman next door and buy rice from the woman next door. But once people are not able to go to work, then the flow of money in the economy will definitely be affected. Bring up piloting, which I know Lagos State is doing in form of food, in form of um, cash. But my challenge basically is the form of getting to these people. That's the challenge I have. I know that we know that those things have to be done. But for an average man, for an average person on the road, how do you get to them? The people that really need this thing. When we don't have a database to do that. We have a lot of people outside the country. They will tell you that this period, the government has increased the allowance they give to their children. You hear people saying something like, oh, they bring food and drop it in front of my room. That means the government has a database and they know what you need. Another friend said to me, I've been laid off for three months for this period and the government is paying me for that for this period. The government doesn't even know whether you and I have a job. So how do they know whether you have been laid off and they need to pay you anything? So as much as government is supposed to put all these measures in place, I think this period should teach us that we need database to be able to take care of the citizens. That is very important. However, well, there are things that the government can do that can impact on other people. For example, the issue of, um, we have, you know, that 7.5% VAT increase was supposed to take effect from February. The government can postpone that. At least that would have impact on pricing. Pricing should, you know, should go down because of that. Maybe people should not pay VAT, should not do VAT, uh, what they call it, return in the next one month or two, just so that it will reduce the impact on the business and business will be able to save jobs. We need to kind of declare a state of emergency in all sector, all sector. There's nothing that we want to produce or want to do this in this country that we don't have human or material resources to do. It's just the willingness to do it that we don't have. I think that this period is going to teach us to look more inward and build on the gain that you know we are, we are going to, I believe that we are going to have this period, we only have gains this period, and we are going to have more. So let us look at the things that we did not do, or the things we have not been doing right. Let's look at the things that we have done. Let's look at the challenges and build on those things. If we are able to do that, of course the economy will bounce back and it will even grow.
You might think the stay-at-home order didn't quite affect those in rural areas. Well, think again. In a small town in Ogun State, compliance can be said to be between 90 to 100% with very few people on the streets. Markets completely empty with no activity. Farmers are not even aware they can sell their goods. Talking to a few farmers, it is clear that the economic order is really harsh on the people. People they do farm, then they sell market, then they sell their food. But now when they don't come market now, they don't fit sell anything. And then they stop the thing, they don't go bring them out for, uh, for farm again. They go for farm, they don't go grab. Because they drop, who go buy them, go spoil. <laughs> Indeed, there's a lot going on. So at a time like this, what do we do as individuals and as a country to help cushion the effects of the stay-at-home order? Um, this uh, pandemic or this coronavirus thing has really brought like a shift in culture and people are now, you know, exploring the digital space more. People are taking advantage now of technology more than, you know, before. So now I can of, of course, I can video call my friends. We can, you know, do, you know, we can say and do silly things over video chats. And then there are like a hundred and one like new apps that you can explore just to keep yourself, you know, busy. We are now utilizing the social media more. And apart from social media, we are getting to read more because. Somebody said that if you want to hide something from the black man or from a Nigerian, keep it in the book. I tell you that right now, people are reading. People will tell you that I just finished the first book, I am reading. Even me, with all the children I have in my house, I am still trying, I am reading. Now, you should be thinking about creating wealth. You should be thinking about the challenges that we have this problem. Because at the end of the day, nobody gives you money because they like you. People give you money because you solve problems. So, this is an opportunity for us to see the things that we can do ourselves as individuals even though you are working somewhere even though you are earning salary you should see the opportunity in this period and begin to look forward to it this may be the time to rebond and reconnect as spouses as a family i also um kind of learned like i also actually got like skills really from just these social uh social media apps I've, I've learned how to edit, like I, I can edit like a bunch of videos and make them synchronize and all of that, so yeah. Why am I reading to build myself intellectually? Because I know that after lockdown, after the lockdown, after COVID-19, this value that I've added to myself will be needed somewhere. So I'm adding to myself right now as I'm even at home. I am working from home, I'm adding to myself, I'm adding value to myself, I'm building myself up more intellectually. Without actively going out to seek entertainment, Nigerians have been forced to embrace technology as a new form of staying entertained. The social media space has never before been so alive, with new mobile apps springing up almost on a daily and the many online challenges going on. It's safe to say that staying at home isn't such a bad thing after all. I've done like um, virtually all the challenges. I've done this press up challenge. I've done the dough rush challenge, which is the one that you, uh, how do I say it now? You get ready, you dress up, you slay, and then you show a video of you just being tacky in the house. And then there's a, trans there's a transition, that kind of thing. I've also done the, what other challenge have I done? I can't remember, just a bunch, a bunch of challenges really. It's just been keeping me, you know, going. If I'm, when I'm not working, I'm doing challenges or learning new skills or something. Despite the palliative measures introduced by governments, the organized private sector and individuals, many still say they didn't receive any relief packages 
to aid them in taking care of their families as they observe the stay-at-home directive. As it is now, people are suffering because of this corona issue. It's a better, at the same time, we're all human beings. Even if I tell government wants everybody to stay at home, yet they are fighting for our safety, we know. You understand, we are fighting for our safety. But at the same time, a pro they must have a provision on it. If I tell they are about to save life, they have to have a provision so that at the end of the day, by staying at home, somebody can have something to eat. If you say sit at home, you should have put something, you know, uh, down for the citizens, for the Lagosians, for Ogun indigenous, for the what another state again, Abuja, you know, indigenous to at least to fall back, to rely on. You can't just say sit, sit at home without bringing out something. But let me just tell you, you say sit at home, you did not give us anything. You said you had so uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, donations, donors, and uh, paying billions and this where are those billions wait small if they are not telling them to go out now eh you will see people they will come out by force nothing will happen because you then keep everybody for house no food no money nothing nothing if you will come out you wait now you can see okay pass that to one way or two with you will see where people will come out by force they look okay because it is no, no, no go stay for us, no food, no, no money, no anything. You make you happy. And if you know it, another skin has to be that. We are hearing that they donated millions. This one, the of the See, I heard that Nigeria, good Nigerians, donating money, donating things to support Nigerians. But I have not seen anything, nothing. Are you here like the people that have seen her that giving a rise or is some of them from churches? Because I could remember in my area yesterday, they are sharing rice for their members. Even to this thing that if you are not a member of that church, they will not give you rice. They said they are giving they are giving their uh, their church members. Sir, mean that now if you are not belong to any church members now, you will die on hunger. So let her government look into it. People are dying for hungry. There's not nobody has no nobody has money. I need the ah you ah you are walking for. I do what I want. I'm to be in I'm to be in I'm to be in I'm going to be in power. 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 I'm going to be Ede, mama dashe on gagi. Le me ta fe me. Le de lanu, ana lanu mo ti dashe on. Mo fun ya kan o bibe. Mo fun on boda kan. Be 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 awon eyan po ti mo fun lo fe ni, lo fe. Ko si owo lo wa awon eyan won o fi se se bi npa won. Ebi ebi gidi, gidi. E ma pa gan taja. Ala ma ja ya gbe ohun si mi le. They know they know see anything now. No, they no come us. But if now the time where they go start to campaign, they go go house to house, house to house. That time they go house to house. Now we people we have a problem now. They no, they no see us. They no, they just to wait for like say they no see us. Let's wait, make the time come where they go do election. They go know everywhere, everywhere, house to house, house to house. But they no, it is not like that. Now this time we support to know there. Say so we get government. Look at here. This is not the first time the world will bear witness to a global pandemic. One of the most popular being the Spanish flu of 1918. Interestingly, it affected Nigeria at the time. And guess what? We survived. Almost the whole world is going through the same issue, coronavirus or COVID-19, where the reaction is the same, where hospitals are being challenged, where medical facilities are being stretched and where people are being ordered to stay at home and to have social distancing is not happened in many people's lives. The last time this sort of thing happened was in 1918. 1918 and not very many people were born and if those were born would not be quite aware of what happened. There was social distancing and self-isolation back then as well. The religious and social economic impact was real 
but Nigeria and Nigerians overcame and bounced back. It seems to have taken us by surprise, but the world is reacting appropriately, and that's a good thing about the world. We always have a way of reacting. Uh, unfortunately, a few people have become casualties, some lives have been lost, very, very painful. But in the generality of the world will recover, and we re-kick, we restart, we reset, and we start again. It has become necessary to extend the current restriction of movement in Lagos and other states, as well as the FCT, for another 14 days, effective from 11.59 p.m. on Monday, 16th of April, 2020. Lagos State has given us like one week before Buhari give us another two weeks. That is three weeks before they can still give us another two weeks. That is five weeks now. And ever since now, with money we have in our account, we have been spending it. And you know what that means to a business person? When you are taking out of your money, you are not putting in. So the business, the money is going down, no profit. If this thing should be stopped, I have to now start from zero again. So what are the means? They say they have a, what do they call it, a loan break. How will I acquire this loan? Where will I go to acquire this loan? The means of going to the place to acquire this loan. It's an issue, it's a problem. It's an issue. So how could they give me the address or where to will I get this loan? It will be perfect. So that's what I'm saying. Please, we are dying. The market continues, resumes now. So there's no money with me. I don't have money at all, at all with me. But if I can see any help after the business, after the, the, the lockdown, uh, it's not a bad idea for me. They should look out to reach out to people. You know that after this lockdown, you know that for them to continue with their business. The children will soon resume school. So government should try to try and assist the individual because it's not easy in order to find their way out. If there is any private setup that can contribute, to say welcome my dear. So much as this period of lockdown may constitute a major challenge to the majority of Nigerians. You don't have 1,000 naira, you don't even have 500 naira to feed your children. That you, you know what it means? One, it makes the man to develop BP. It makes the man not to sleep well at night. When a man is at home, you don't have copper to feed your family. Okay, when you touch your wife, your wife will slap you. All this till they go like this, none of us will come out. By force, they are not going to listen to anybody again because of hunger. It's not easy to stay at home, no food, nothing, nothing. Now all those boys where they no get the food, they no get work. Then they the tower rise, tower rise, tower rise. Where they no get work before. What do you want to make them? What do you want to make them eat? Nothing. Let's do. Let's the way we see. They will see. They will come out and remember. Begin box shop. Again, if for for half to like this, nobody goes to stop them. Do you think it's food? Where there's no food, they can do and undo. Because if you no know, you know, get food, you no know, shop, anything can happen. But well, what this shows for the government, and it's a warning to the government, is the soft economic underbelly that Nigeria has. It goes to show that if we're not careful, we cannot really live out a serious crisis and we may have not just a pandemic on our hands, but a revolution. For the period of the lockdown, do not let us find ourselves in a situation whereby vices will be on the increase. Vices like stealing will be on the increase. Vices like robbery will be on the increase because people are trying to meet up needs. My advice to the government also is do something so that there will be more employment for people who have lost their jobs and who will lose their jobs after. Though we are faced with the daunting realities of the harsh impact of COVID-19, as a people, we believe there is hope for a better tomorrow. Because COVID-19 will bring negative and positive situations, and this is it. Some families have rebonded and reconnected and to continue that way. Some relationships will be broken. Some friendships will not continue. 
then some people have learnt a lot of good stuff. Some 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 good habits like reading will continue, practicing of you know germane hygiene will continue. Life is not going to remain the same way. You know things that we take things that we take for granted before now, like our hygiene. We know how important it is now to be hygienic, to keep safe. You know, little things that we don't take care of, like washing our hands and all that. After COVID, I believe that, you know, it would have become a way of life, to become a way of life, to live hygienically. The government, I'm also advising that at this point, all the taxes that have been paid should be utilized in providing more infrastructure for the citizens that you say that you are governing and you are protecting put things in place. I heard that NAS is trying to pass a law to provide for two months of electricity. Let it not be just two months. Let it be six months or even a year. So every economic issues that we have in Nigeria is exposed now. It shows that we don't have savings. It shows that people don't have steady income. It shows that if you don't work for one day, they might probably starve. It shows that the government has not been sensitive enough in the past to the requirements of the people. Post-COVID, uh, to give us the opportunity to reduce, to cut down, at least if you're not able to eliminate completely medical tourism and invest more in our hospitals. To also give us the opportunity to, to revamp our manufacturing sector so that we can produce almost everything that we need. The government used this opportunity to totally restructure Nigeria should be totally self-sufficient in food. Like in the times of Joseph, we should have bands and bands and bands of reserved food, agricultural produce that can last us six months to one year in case there should be an attack on this nation, okay? We should have people who are not just daily income earners, but they have good income with a lot of savings. There should be transparency and accountability in distribution of reliefs, food for everyone in the society at a period like this at, at a time like this you said you want to read the poor of the poorest if you want to read the poor of the poorest go to their cdas their community development associations and the community development councils reach them let non-governmental organizations do the monitoring for you so that there can be proper documentation of these processes so going forward in nigeria we want good leadership we want sincere leadership, we want focused leadership, we want humble leadership, we want leadership that fears God and cares for the poor, and leadership that is not greedy. Nigeria is a highly homogeneous society. And for this reason, no amount of coronavirus lockdown will be capable of ripping apart the very fabric of our interpersonal relationship as a people.